Today's video is going to focus on the von Thunen model. Uh, this is really trying to show the patterns we're going to see as in agricultural um, commercial farming. So, or commercial agricultural farming. Uh, Johann Friedrich von Thunen um, came along in, in the mid or the early 1800s and he established this model um, as a way of explaining the agricultural practices that he was seeing around him in Western Europe. And what we find is this model actually still holds true today. Now keep in mind, it's a model. It doesn't directly explain the reality or the context of exactly how it happens in, in the real world. However, it shows us it's, as a model, it explains and, and, and tends to hold up. It's based on these assumptions. Now if you read the first four, the four main assumptions that von Thunen had, um, right away you can see that this doesn't really work um, in that it assumes that the city um, is, is going to be isolated. In, in a sense, it's the only one out there. Um, that there is no cities nearby, there's not a bigger city um, in, in proximity. It's, it's independent and isolated. Um, and so that unoccupied wilderness is just, again, reiterating the fact that there's nothing else out there. Um, and it's assuming that the land is, is uniform, so it's all the same. It's also assuming that it's flat and there are no physical features like r lakes, rivers, mountains, anything that would act as some sort of barrier or uh, change the course of how land, any particular land would be used. Another important piece is the fact that Von Thunen was in the 1820s. Uh, transportation was pretty limited. Um, it was on ground, it was slow, and it was pretty uniform to a horse and wagon um, for the most part. Now one common thing that is actually still very relevant today and, and translates to modern day practices is that agriculture, or at least commercial agriculture, is focused on maximizing profits. While farmers do a great thing and provide food for us all, their goal is to stay in business and to produce a, a surplus that they can sell and satisfy their own wants and needs. So, given that, let's take a look at the model. Because farmers are trying to stay profitable, what they do is um, that we have to consider what their costs are. And when you think about wh what a farmer needs to do is to grow or produce a, cr a good or, or, or animal and bring it to market for sale. Um, and th depending on the distance and the bulk or the difficulty of transporting that particular product, um, is going to really uh, impact the costs of their production and whittle away at their potential profits. So looking at this, you can see a partial concentric ring, uh, rings and the star representing our city center over here. And we can see on the y-axis is the economic rent um, or the cost of the land as you move away from the city center. Now, uh, being wanting to be near it, you see residential has the steepest curve because people want to live nearby the city where those markets are, um, but it's going to cost the most. And dairy products, given that they, especially in the 1800s, spoiled and, and perished and were very bulky, um, they tended to be closer to that market center as well. So, and, and those would be the next expensive place to live. As you move further away from the city, you see the wheat producing or the commercial grains. And then the furthest is the, is the grazing lands where animals can, are free to roam. Um, land, it, you are a f long way from the city center. It, the land generally isn't as productive. And so therefore, it's going to be very cheap. This economic portion is a really important part to keep in mind as we look at these, the rest of the model itself. On the left, you see the Von Thun model in its, in its purest form in the sense that it is those concentric rings that we might see around a, a, an urban center or city. Um, and the, on the right, you see what happens when we actually apply some of those changes with a physical feature like a river. Starting with the, the Von Thun model on the left, we see the city in the middle, and the closest ring is the, is horticulture and dairying. And basically what we see here is market gardening or, or things that are either highly perishable or very heavy that need to be close to the market. Things like watermelons, for example. A truckload of watermelons would be extraordinarily heavy and be expensive to transport any significant difference, yet there's a market for them that would be uh, desired in any urban area. It also means the same with dairy products, that again, given the time of, of perishability, we're not assuming refrigerated trucks or ability to transport things quickly or to store them. Um, they had to, they were heavy, bulky, and, and had to get to market quickly before they perished. 
and lost their value. Now, this next ring is the forestry ring, which in the 1820s was vital. Maybe not looking at it today, but in the 1820s, forests or the wood taken from the forest was fuel. And so, and, and again, bulky and very difficult to transport long distances. So it made sense that the fuel things that would heat their homes, to heat the ovens, um, the things that they used on a daily basis would be nearby to prevent those long and, and difficult transportation um, costs. The next ring we see crop rotation or um, crop and pasture alternate use. Basically what this meant was you had livestock that was being fattened and so you had to raise grain to feed the livestock, corn, wheat, um, hay, barley, things that were again used that are going to be rotated based on the needs or the nutrients replenishment of the soil. Um, yeah, as, as we look at the crop rotation, those fields are used for those cereal grains. And as we move for outward, um, we're going to see, again, continued use for uh, agriculture. And then the furthest one, you see the grazing ring. And looking at uh, where you're going to see livestock that's openly um, allowed to graze, it isn't as, as intensively fattened as we see in those inner rings that um, uh, near the city. When we look at the, um, th the impact physical features actually have, you see that river distorts the, the model pretty significantly. And the reason for this is because the river, is, it changes the transportation requirement, that it's no longer equal, that being on the river is easier to transport bulky or heavy things. It's fast and can be accessed the city center differently than if you were having to travel over land, thus skewing the model and, f and sort of flattening it out, if you will, um, along those river sources. This is just another example or another model showing some of the um, uh, different uh, factors that might modify the conditions, like another city, again, a river that would distort the model. Hopefully that helps explain the von Thunen model and give you a better understanding of the basic um, assumptions and characteristics of the, mo the model itself. When we get to class, we'll be using, we'll do some activities to apply it and see if it actually holds up in the United States, in Minnesota, uh, and in practice.